<laughs> Are we good? Yep. All right. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to Zoo Classroom. We're, uh, we're a little, uh, it's almost Friday. <laughs> So welcome, guys. I'm so glad you can join us again. Hi, my name is Nikki, community education here at the North Carolina Community Education Coordinator at the North Carolina Zoo. I'll get it out eventually. So welcome back, guys, to our zoo classroom. Before we get started, again, we'll go over the rules really quick. I know most of you guys probably know them by heart by now, but just in case there are a few new people coming and joining us, which were, would be very exciting. So you guys are muted and your cameras are off. It's just for everybody's safety and my peace of mind. <laughs> and but that does not mean we don't want to communicate with you. So I will be asking you guys lots of questions. So if you have an answer to my question, put those in the chat. And I got Chelsea over here helping me monitor a chat and letting me know your answers. And then I got Miss Megan behind the camera. Yeah. She's going to help me with a Q&A. So if you have questions for me and it takes a team, guys. I have a team of smart people back there. Or I like to call them the Googlers. <laughs> They're out there helping answer those questions too. So questions for us go in the Q&A. My questions, your answers to my questions go in the chat. Hope that makes sense. Okay, we'll try it. All right, here we go. So happy Bat Week, guys. I don't know if you guys know it, it's Bat Week. And we're celebrating bats this week because bats are awesome. So let's let's test out your chat, your chat typing skills. How many of you guys like bats? So thumbs up, thumbs down, Wendy. yes, no. Wendy, we know. <laughs> She's our bat guru here. Our bat nerd. Are they bat? <laughs> I'm a bird nerd. Doesn't quite rhyme as well. well. <laughs> the bat nerd. We got any yays, nays, and it, it can go either way. I'm not judging. Maybe yeah. I just responded four times. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, yours. I do. Bats are awesome. Love yeah. that. <laughs> Woohoo. I like to hear that. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> if you don't like them, my job as an educator is hopefully by the end of this program, you'll at least have a little more respect for them as you learn more about them. That's what we usually do. As we learn more about things, we figure, oh, they're not so scary or bad as we thought we were. So cool. Yay. So let's learn about bats because they are awesome and they are amazing. But what is a bat? So, Miss Beth, if you could please show our first slide of the PowerPoint. Let's see. <laughs> it's always that little bit of lag. Here it comes. All right. So we have four pictures there, guys. So is a bat an insect? Is it a reptile? Is it a bird? Or is it a mammal? So put in that chat if you think it's a reptile, a bird, a mammal, or an insect? We've got mammal, 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 lots of mammals. Yay, <laughs> good, excellent, perfect. They are mammals, you're right. Even though all those critters can kind of fly-ish, <laughs> some of them are gliders, not true flyers. So they are mammals. And of the mammals, let's see how smart you guys were. This one's a tough one. What? is it most closely related to? What do you think it's most closely related to? Do you think it's um, related to what we call the rodents, which are your rats, your mice, your squirrels, all those kind of animals? Um, are they primates, your lemurs, gorillas, us, uh, monkeys, all that stuff, uh, canines, your dogs, your foxes, your wolves? What do you guys think? What do you think they're most closely related to of all our mammal groups? Natalie says rodents. 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 A lot of people say rodents. Absolutely. They kind of look like, a lot of people think they look flying mice, right? A lot of rats and rodents. A lot of rats and rodents. That's, what, that's usually what we get. Beth, if you can go to our next slide and we'll show you what their truly most closely living relative <laughs> It's this crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> And honestly, before like, you know, a day or so ago, I had no idea about these things. <laughs> they are just so weird looking. Can anybody, does anybody know what that is? Let's see if anybody out there knows. Can you have any idea what kind of animal that is? Paula says no. Yeah. <laughs> I won't blame you. No. <laughs> yeah. Up until like a day ago, I would have been like, I have no idea what that thing is. <laughs> well, Natalie says a lemur. You're getting closer, warmer. You're getting warmer. Nope. Yeah, that's a tough one. Have you ever heard of something called a kaluga? Nope. 
C O L U G O. <laughs> like that Kalugo. And it's kind of in its own group of mammals. And they are kind of, they're gliding animals, mammals from Southeast Asia. And their closest relatives are primates. And primates are us humans, gorillas, monkeys, lemurs, all those, those animals there. So bats are actually kind of close to humans. Yeah, our primates, which is pretty cool. All right, Beth, you can go back to me. Let's see. Uh, let me get, my, get my stiff. So what makes them a mammal? Ooh, I got in close there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Looking up my nose. <laughs> so what characteristics of bats have that make them a mammal? What do you guys think? <laughs> it seemed really long answers. <laughs> now those answers are uh, questions. Uh, live, birth. live birth. Live birth, right? Oh, look at this. This is my <laughs> <laughs> babies in a burrito. Yeah. Baby bat burrito. Come on, yeah. that's cute. All right. Baby They're bat. Also to nurse their young. Nice. That is definitely key, right? Just like Oh, well, the primates, all the mammals, I should say, <laughs> their babies drink milk when they're born. Absolutely. Anything else? This stuff. Mine's very windblown today. Mm -hmm. It was out in the wind. <laughs> you mean you were outside? I was, was yeah, because I got a hurricane coming through here. So it's a little windy. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do they got? Here. So. Just in case. Hair. Hair. There we go. Hair, fur, right. So mammals have fur and hair. Give that burst. Except for those. Uh, you know, we can never say never and always say always, right? <laughs> With animals. Of course, there's that platypus. And I think the echidna too, right? The lay eggs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you never want to fit in those, those categories we like to stick them in. So yeah, so they are mammals. And what's really cool is they are only flying mammal, truly flying mammal. And I just love the skeleton because this kind of shows you, if we talk about, you know, they are kind of closely related-ish to two primates. And look at this skeleton. To me, it looks very similar to ours. Obviously some differences. I don't know, does anybody have long fingers like that? <laughs> if you do, you yeah. may be able to fly. Ooh. I would like to know if that's real. This is a real bat skull or skeleton <laughs> and skull. There's a skull there too. It is real. I did not do this. We bought this. <laughs> and you can buy some pretty cool bat skeletons and specimens <coughs> online, which are pretty cool. So, yeah, so I love this because this, look how many fingers they have. Can you see count how many? I'm going to put my hand behind it. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, oh. There we go. How many hand, how many fingers do you see? So while we're on the fingers uh, topic, Natalie wants to know if the fingers is what they fly with. Right. Absolutely. Because so, if you look, there's one, two, three, four fingers and a thumb. So just like our hand, a thumb, four fingers. So bats are in the group, fancy science group called Chiroptera, which basically means hand wing. So they literally are flying with their hands. So it's not, it's a lot like ours, except for much longer fingers, of course. <laughs> you know, and they have the forearm, the upper arm, same leg, they got ribs, kind of like ours. Their feet <laughs> are kind of facing backwards, actually. Why would you want backward facing feet? What do you guys think? A little bit unusual. So the toes are actually facing towards you and away from me. It's hard to see on the on the camera here. So why would they have backwards facing feet? Give you a hint. It's how they rest. Mm. Where do bats like the rest or how do bats like the rest? I think. No guesses? No. Where do you find a bat? What are they doing? Are they right side up or are they? 
Hang it upside down, right? Upside yeah, upside down. Down. there you go. Okay. Hang it upside down. And so that allows them to grab on and hold on. And they have special muscles and ligaments in there. So literally when they're hanging, it's locked. It's like in a locked position. And then they have to let go, release, like straighten the leg and release. It, and then they can fly off. So pretty cool. So that way we have to spend energy holding this up there. So well, we do have a couple of questions. Sure. Maybe. Absolutely. Um, so the first one, it says Paula. I know your name is probably Joseph. not Paula. Joseph. <laughs> okay. Is this Joseph? Okay. Um, <laughs> wants to know, would it be possible to have one as a pet? Oh, good question. And no. <laughs> it is not. It's illegal. Oh, Liam, um, sorry. I thought, Joseph, earlier, there was, no. I think there's three or four, um, yeah. and mine was somebody else, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry so now they are what we call a rabies vector animal. Um, and so it is very illegal to have one as a pet or anything like that, uh, up until a, a little, probably about a year Last or so year, ago. Yeah. Um, it was a, a re wildlife rehabilitators or people that take in wildlife and try to fix them up couldn't take bats in. And then they started realizing, okay, well, we need to save bats. Bats are very important. And so they started letting them to do it because of that rabies vector, because they are rabies. So no, you cannot have one as a pet. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, but you can come walk at the zoo and <laughs> see bats, or come to the zoo and see bats. Um, or study bats. There's definitely jobs in that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later too. So lots of cool things you can do with bats. And they are pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Bats are one of, the, one of the most diverse groups of mammals, rodents being the first one, and then bats under that. And there's some weird looking bats out there, guys. Look at these. These two at the bottom. <laughs> Gotta yeah. creep me out. Those are crazy, right? So there's, the <laughs> yes, I, know. He's got the the I call him the Mohawk one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so pretty cool. I mean, there's, there's 14, over 1400 different species of bats out there. And they come in all shapes and sizes. Some really big, the largest one being a flying fox. Yeah, flying fox. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a wingspan from wingtip, I keep forgetting, <laughs> too close, from wingtip to wingtip of about six feet. So I'm five, six, so it's even, taller than me. So yeah, so huge. And then the smallest one is our bumblebee bat and it weighs as much as a penny. So super, super tiny. Very, very real. And Miss Beth, if you can show us our next slide. So <laughs> how I kind of categorize bats in different groups, a bunch of them by what they eat. What different foods do you think this animal or this bat eats? Let's see if you guys are smart. What kind of this. food? Those big eyes. I know, big eyes, big nose. Now we get mouth. Aubrey and Christy say bat. He is a bat, but what kind of? Sorry, I didn't hear the word. What food? What do you think this animal eats? What food does this bat? Excuse me, this bat eat? I'll spit yeah, it out eventually. Fruit. Nice, right? This is a fruit bat. So that flying fox I talked about had those really huge wings. Is a fruit eating bat. So yeah, a lot of bats eat fruit. Um, and some of those bats get really, really big, <laughs> as you can see. And they're not blind, so they have excellent eyesight to be able to find that fruit. Absolutely. And their sense of smell, too, to be able to smell that nice, ripe fruit. All right, Beth, let's go to our next one. What other things. <laughs> somebody, or what else? Oh, somebody, somebody had guessed crickets. crickets in the last one. Right. So about 70% of all the species of bats are insect eaters, like this guy. And some of them eat meat. Some bats eat uh, fish. Some of them will actually hunt for fish. Some of them eat frogs, mice, rats, all that kind of stuff. So <coughs> some of them are hunters and predators and could <laughs> catch other. <laughs> what does he say? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> So a lot of insect eaters. Okay, what's our next eater? Thank you, Beth. All right. What do you think that bat is eating? <laughs> Natalie gets fruit. Well, uh, Terry says flower. 
flowers, but what's mm -hmm. in the flower? Just like bees yeah, and hummingbirds. Nectar. What are they yeah. going to get, right? That nectar, absolutely. So we have nectar eating bats, absolutely. And then our most notorious bats. We did have there Nicole, we go. which is the vampire bat earlier, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's ahead of the game. Yep. <laughs> right, so that is our blood suckers, but they are not blood suckers. Yes, they do eat blood, but they don't suck blood. <laughs> and this is how scary they are. Here we go. Hello. Oh my God, run and hide. <laughs> Enter the woods. Enter the hills. So big and scary, right? Oh, look at those dagger teeth. <laughs> so not huge, very small. <laughs> this one. Look how small. <laughs> sorry, I'm cracking up at the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so very small, not huge, not big at all. So they do eat blood. Does anybody know what kind of blood? Whose blood? Ooh. Whose blood do they eat? Type A, B. Yeah, A, B. O positive, oh, negative. <laughs> negative. <laughs> no. What animal's blood do they usually drink? Do you guys um, know? Nicole gets cow. Cow, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, moose, I think. Moose. Moose or cows, I'm not sure. <laughs> what, what are those? Yeah. <laughs> it's a typo. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if they have moose down in South America. <laughs> so vampire bats, there's I think three different species of vampire bats, and they're found mostly in Central and South America. So not around here unless you come to the zoo. But we do have vampire bats here. Uh, well, I, I do want to throw this out there. Yeah. Andrea says us. Human blood, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they will go out and hunt for animals that are sleeping outside, and then they can easy access to. So most humans are just sleeping out on the ground, right? They usually are in a house or you know in a tent or something like that. So very rarely, they will if it's available, but it's very rare. It's mostly the sheep, cows, goats, chickens. I've seen them. I've seen videos of uh, seals that are they were sleeping Ooh. on like the, a beach and stuff like that. So yeah. So anything that's pretty much kind of out there sleeping, a mammal that's warm blooded they will come up and you know and they will drink some blood and it's pretty awesome so they go up and they're sharp front teeth and they just make a little cut just a tiny little cut and then they have very special spit that has what we call an anticoagulant in it oh my nails i need a, i need a manicure man <laughs> so <laughs> sorry distracting myself um, so yeah, they break that short little cut and that spit can kind of numb it up and it makes the blood keep flowing. So like I said, they don't suck the blood out, they lap it. So they lick it up like a dog mm -hmm. and they drink two deep spoons of blood. You think about a cow, that's, that's not yeah, much that's at nothing. all coming from a cow. Right, that's nothing. Right. right. And so the cow, he might twitch a little bit because he felt, you know, like sometimes, you know, that one little spot, it twitches you like, oh, like that, something. Yeah, I think about horse you. flies by, you know. Yeah, or a mosquito, you're kind of like, oh, something got me. And humans, we, we have very I mean, we sensitive, can... we, we can feel that. So that's right. even, you know. They have thicker skin and yeah. hide and fur to get through, right? So they're not quite as sensitive. So a lot of times they don't even feel it happening and they might wake up and they'll wake up the next day and they just have a little cut. And that's it. So pretty awesome. And then that, then they fly off or <laughs> walk off and then fly off because they're one of the few that can actually walk on the ground and they walk kind of on their thumbs. <laughs> it's yeah. so cool to see it when you walk you see them in the, at the zoo walking around the, their habitat. They it's pretty cool. A little bowl and I know. Mm -hmm. I lap it up like a dog. <laughs> so pretty cool. So absolutely. So those are the different kinds of feeders. How do all of those animals find their food? What do they use? What do bats use to be able to find fruit insects, fish, <laughs> all that good stuff. What do you guys think? What senses do you think they use? Echolocation. Oh. Echolocation, right. And sense of smell, right? That fruit bat uses a sense of smell, sound, ears, absolutely. They use that echolocation. This <laughs> Sorry, tell me. They make this really kind of, they, each species has its own type of call and they make,
Next one is my favorite. Had a good beat, right? <laughs> that noise remix. <laughs> so they make those kind of high pitched chirping noises and that high frequency, and it bounces and hits an object and comes back to their ears. And depending on how fast it comes back to them, it, let them, it lets them know if there's a tree branch coming out of them or an insect or their food in the way, and it helps them just kind of navigate their way around the world, which is pretty awesome. Vampire bats do a little different too. So they actually can sense heat. <laughs> so they know exactly where that blood is closest to the skin and know right where to go to make that little cut. So they don't have to like dig in deep. <laughs> so they're very considerate animals. <laughs> so that is what a bat is. So they're eating a variety of animals. There's so many different kinds of them. They're pretty awesome. But they are also essential to our ecosystem and even our economy. So what do you guys think? How do bats help us out? How do they help the world out? How do they make the world a little better place? What do you guys think? Anybody have any ideas? How bats help us out? So this one's so hot. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm sweating a mask here. Jason it's so hot. Uh, Claudia says they eat bugs. They eat bugs. Jerry says insect control. Yeah. Guys, this is pretty cool. So this tiny, tiny little bit. Oh my goodness. No, I should bring this one too. <laughs> so these little bats here, these tiny little bats, can eat a, this little brown bat right here. This is the skull of a little brown bat. How tiny that is. It's smaller than my nail. So small, I won't focus on it. <laughs> it can eat a thousand mosquitoes in a night. So I don't know about you guys, I would much rather have bats than mosquitoes. So important job, keeping a lot of pests under control. Anything else? Any other benefits that we get from bats? Hmm. Oh, I think you'll be surprised. Okay. And it's perfect timing, guys. When you guys are out trick or treating this weekend, oh, if you can, know. hopefully we can. <laughs> However, you're doing it this year. Thank your bats. You would not have a lot of this candy and all this stuff that we have over <laughs> here. Can you can you see it on the screen? Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. all, all this stuff you see here, and then some and more. Is thanks to bats because they are they're eating the mosquitoes but they're also eating bugs that eat the crops that we need to eat right so they're saving farmers billions three billion that's with a b three billion dollars every year from having to um you know from crops being destroyed and for, for having to buy pesticides <laughs> to put on the crops to kill the insects so Super, super savers, money savers. That's where I said that economy coming in. They help our economy a lot. Jennifer just says, some, oh, thank the bats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would not want to live in a world where we could not have <laughs> chocolate or a lot of this stuff. Grapes we got, you know, they're eating or they're eating the bugs and they're also doing something else. That's helping plants. Let's see, like, like this. When you guys get older of, of age of 21, so this is an agave plant and this plant only flowers at night for that nectar eating bat and then that bat is doing what when it goes and sticks its head into that flower let me know what the fancy science word begins with a p what they're doing when they're collecting that Sticky stuff that gets all over their their fur when they put their head in the in the oh, flower. Pollinate. Pollinating, so right? So they're sticking their head into the flower of that gauzy flower, and they're collecting pollen all over their head. And then they go to the next flower, getting the nectar and dropping off pollen and picking up new <laughs> pollen, and that is pollinating that plant. So now we can have, so now our adults can make <laughs> margaritas. <laughs> so tequila is where we get from the agave plant. So. A lot of things, and oh, so my, this is why I am thankful for that. <laughs> Coffee and chocolate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would not be able to survive without bats <laughs> in a world without bats. <laughs> so, guys, 
So a lot of different things they give us. So they're eating all those bugs, they're polluting the plants, and you remember those fruits, fruit bats, those fruit eating bats? They're actually helping too. You're thinking, oh my God, they're eating our fruit. Ah. They actually have an important job. So they're eating fruit and they're dispersing the seeds. So, and they're very, bats are actually vital for bringing back rainforest. So they will go into the forest. If, if it's been cleared out, you know, there's an empty field, there's no trees growing, bats will go in, you know, they'll go do their thing going into the forest, eating the fruits. And then as they fly over the field, they're pooping out the, the seeds and dispersing the seeds so the forest can grow back. Birds do the same thing, but birds are a little bit more shy. They fly around the edges of the forest. They don't go over out into the middle of the open fields. That's a bat's job. So bats are really responsible for bringing back rainforest, and, you know, so the rainforest can grow back. So super, super amazing because there's, there's a habitat for a lot of animals, right? So super important, guys. And even, you know, we probably have talked about this in other programs, but what is that? What's this somebody. word? Somebody knows. What does oh, that mean? Yeah. Oh, there you go, right. Yeah, so good. even bat poop is good. My God. What do you use bat poop for? It's a big fancy word. It says it on the bottom right here. Eat. <laughs> right. What does yeah. that what does that do? I know. Too quiet. Put a quick on the, the enter <laughs> button. I know you do. <laughs> right, fertilizer. So it's putting nutrients back into the soil. The plants can grow, and now we have more plants that can grow, and we can eat more plants. <laughs> <laughs> Not very old news. So yes, poop is good. So McKinsey, McKinsey has a good uh, analogy, uh -huh. I might say. So bats are like airplanes uh, with water that oh. fly over fire and drop the water. So you nice. know, they kind of do yeah. drop the seeds and, right. and then, yeah, they're, they're putting out the fire. <laughs> they're, <laughs> right for them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're reseeding the yes. forests that has been. Absolutely. Reseeding those yeah. forests, those rainforests. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. so back to that vampire bat. I love to talk about it because they're pretty awesome. So remember we talked about that special spit? It's got the uh, anticoagulant, big fancy word. Does any does anyone want to guess what they what do you think that is? Mm. What an anticoagulant is? That's a big one. Good, bad, wrong, <laughs> right. Oh, C O U Co. No. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> I was trying to tell you the chat room. It's too, it's, it's been a long day. <laughs> nope. uh, so basically, it means when you guys cut yourselves, if you actually cut yourselves, you don't bleed forever, right? Eventually, it stops or clots or coagulates, is the fancy word. So the blood, the, the blood cells kind of kind of group up and they stop it from bleeding too much so you don't bleed out because you don't want to lose too much blood. And so a bat has an anticoagulant. So as they're making that little cut, that saliva is keeping that blood flowing so it doesn't clot up. That way they can get enough blood. Well, there's a special protein in their spit. <laughs> and of course, scientists, being fun people that they are, they named it draculin, is that protein. And then they, are studying that protein and using, they've been able to synthesize it or make it in a lab and make medicine from it that are helping people that have had strokes, heart attacks, or have blood clots or anything like that. So saving people's lives. So vampire bats are saving people's lives. So medicines, uh, they're fertilizing, they're dispersing seeds, they're pollinating plants, they're killing insects and bugs, and all that cool stuff. So amazing animals right so they are a vital part of our ecosystem yes oh <laughs> <laughs> sorry she's trying to tell me the time but she wrote it on her hand and she's like i'm like yes you have a question <laughs> oh that's crazy okay. we have to have fun so <laughs> don't crack them laughing oh one thing i forgot how can i forget 
Oh, going back to that poop. <laughs> it's like going back to the bat poop. <laughs> it this. also provides food <laughs> for animals. Because a lot of times bat poop, if it sits in there, or bird poop, if it collects for too long, uh, fungus grows on it. And that's when you can get diseases and you can get sick if you kind of inhale it. But we have critters out there that that's their job is to clean up the poop, <laughs> the bad poop. Yay. And that is this guy's job. He's a he, he is a Caribbean giant cockroach and he lives in caves in the Caribbean. <laughs> and that is his job to eat bat poop. So the bats are providing food for lots of animals too. So what would happen if we set him loose in that bucket? Would he be really happy? He might. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, oh my goodness. It's like, it's heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Angels start singing. <laughs> All right. So they are providing food for lots of animals. And the animals are there cleaning them up too. Just like very important jobs. So bats have important jobs. So do insects as we probably have learned in previous, just as important job. All right, um, <laughs> I was gonna say, do you guys have any questions about bats or my cockroach friend I have here? Oh, I was about to comment on the, um, Claudia says, I thought there's no such thing as Count Dracula, but Wendy has given the um, history of Count Dracula. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know if you guys, you know, we've, we've talked about myths before, if you've been to any of our programs, there's a little, always a little bit of truth where, you know, that comes from, there's like a true, little bit of a true story to a lot of your myths that they, they come from. So yeah. Oh, oh yes. What is this top made of? I'm assuming that is about his, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, it looks really cool. So that's kind of exoskeleton, which is actually made out of a, some, a protein called chitin. And so these are actually his wings. So this is a winged cockroach. Um, you guys, we probably have met our Madagascar hissing ones and they are wingless. So they have wings, but they don't really fly very much. They tend to hang out on the ground. You know, it's mostly if they climb up a wall and they have to get down quick, they can kind of just flutter, kind of like a chicken. <laughs> they go up to roost and they fly down, but they don't fly very far. They just hop around. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just there if they need it. <laughs> but they can't go long distances flight. Diana says, oh my goodness, it's real? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> All right. Thanks, buddy. Here we go. I almost forgot him. I know, right? Goodness. I should have come put him with a poop. I would have reminded you. Uh, True. Oh, yeah, well. Sorry, I'm telling you. I need all the help I can get. All right. So, bats good. Yay, bats, right? Yay. <laughs> Yay. But unfortunately, a lot of bats are in trouble. So about quarter, one fourth of the bat species in the United States and actually in the world are in decline. Our starting the numbers are really starting to go down. Does anybody have any ideas? Have you heard any reasons why bat populations are lowering, going down? Have anybody heard any of those? Uh, Natalie <laughs> said hunting. Hunting, right, yep. Some, some places do actually eat them. And then so I think a lot of places, I want to say in Africa and maybe some parts of Asia, they do actually eat bats. Kelly says the disease. Disease. Any particular disease? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody heard of, let's show, Beth, Miss Beth, can you please oh, show oh, us? We got oh, it, white oh. nose syndrome. Nice, yeah, we do. Yeah. Let's show everybody what they mean. Thank you, Beth. So yeah, white nose syndrome. It's so aptly named. <laughs> They're so clever in their naming. <laughs> so there's a fungus that grows kind of on their nose and their ears and their wings. And actually it was not in the United States up until 2006. And it was actually brought into the United States into caves in New York. Um, and it has spread quickly. And what it does it's these hibernating bats they store up just you know enough energy to get them through the winter so they can hibernate and they don't have to waste energy you know moving around but that wakes them up so that fungus actually wakes them up and so when they wake up and they move around they're using up energy that is vital for them to get through the winter 
And so they literally don't have enough energy to get through the winter and they starve. And so it is a huge issue and millions of bats have died from it. Beth, you can come back to me. Thank you. So, like I said, 2006, just in New York, upstate New York. <laughs> is there a bug flying on here? Everybody's going like this. I'm like, what's going on? We need a bat. Need us. Yes, we need our bat. <laughs> so this was 2010. So in just four years, it spread. And then this is 2019. Look around. Wow. Yeah. So it's spreading quickly. And they're finding that um, some species of bats are okay with it. They're resistant and some are not. Kind of like us and what's going on, right? This pandemic, the coronavirus. Some people are affected by it. Some people are not. So same with the bats. Some of them are affected by, are affected by this white nose syndrome. Some of them are doing okay and are, are fine with it. So, but it still has killed millions of bats. And they're really worried about those highly endangered, critically endangered bats that are in small little pockets of land. And if it gets into those areas, we could, they could be extinct. So that's what they're really, the scientists, I say they, I mean, the scientists are studying and watching and making sure that they're kind of safe. All right, so we got the white nose syndrome. Somebody said, um, <coughs> excuse me, hunting. Somebody right. earlier Ooh. had said uh, rabies. Rabies, right? Um, rabies, yeah, it can, absolutely. So bats can get rabies. Very few do, and they do actually die from it. So yes, yes. Um, <laughs> you have a question at a time, right? Yeah, okay. use your finger. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Natalie wants to know, can white nose syndrome affect humans? I don't think it can. I'm not 100% sure. We, um, we is can Wendy still here? It. I know we can we can take it from cave to cave, and that's what happened. Is somebody went in a cave, they had it on their shoes, they walked into the cave, and they spread it, and that's how it kind of spread. You know, well, you said that's cave. right, but okay. it doesn't impact us. I don't think. I don't think it hurts humans, but we are the spreaders of it. <laughs> I should say, right? Uh, let's see. So, habitat loss. So a lot of bats, not all bats live in caves. So some bats actually live in the woods. And as we cut down forests, they lose their homes. Um, probably one of our more common bats we have around in here in North Carolina is the red bat. And they like to live under bark. So like of like a, um, a dead tree, the bark's kind of loose. They'll kind of slide under it. And a lot, of, a lot of bats will do that. They'll slide under the bark. It's nice and toasty and warm and uh, you know, it's safe and protected and hidden. Um, red bats will hang in trees. Um, this time of year, if they're hanging up in a tree, they look like a leaf. And you can't really tell that they're there. So, so they, you know, the ha the trees coming down, they're losing their their homes too. So a lot of habitat loss. Um, a lot of people go in the caves in the winter where they're hibernating, and just like that white nose syndrome, they get woken up by people instead. And then, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> And so they can't survive the winter. They, they expend that energy and won't be able to survive the winter. Um, even, uh, you know, we're trying to be, use sustainable energy. And so we have wind turbines, you know, harnessing the power of the wind. <laughs> we really do need a bat in here. I got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so they're, the wind turbines, and they're going really, really fast. And bats, when they're migrating, will fly, unfortunately, through them. So, Probably like a million or so bats have been died due to the wind turbines, but people in the power industry and in you know working with bats that care about bats are working together to figure out what they can do. And they've learned that well, if we slow down the turbines during the migration season, a lot less have been killed. Um, so it does help. So we're still trying to figure out different ways because we need to do that sustainable energy. We still we need that, um, but we also need to save our bats too. So kind of work together in that. Uh, climate change is impacting them. So with you know, the weather being all wonky and how it is, things are you know blooming earlier or later, insects are coming and going. So as the bats migrating, normally on this part of their, their migration route, there's a food source, but that food source might've already come and gone because of things are all thrown off at this point. So a lot of issues going on. Yes, we got a finger up. Natalie wants to know <laughs> how many can be in the clock is what she 
in a, a flap? Um, I'm not sure. That. It, it depends. Um, there is, is it Bracken Cave? I think has. Oh, wow. Wendy just. Two million, like, or 10 million? Wendy Mexican says 15 frito. million from the Bracken Cave. Bracken Cave, yeah, in Texas. So oh, they're like, wow. as a Mexican <laughs> free bats in there. So yeah, so they're huge. And I think the Congress Street Bridge has like an, a million living under it in Austin, Texas. So a lot of them can be huge. Not all of them are gonna be that big, <laughs> but you know, depends. they can be one. Some bats are solitary, like that red bat. <laughs> and some of them live in colonies. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the colonies. Yes. There are a lot of little bugs in here. Now I see them. Yeah, there's <laughs> three. The <laughs> so yeah, so they are. They can be anywhere from one to fifteen million, <laughs> depending. Um, All right. I just wanted to share this uh, with the group in case anybody's not monitoring chat. Um, that Mackenzie knew a fact that I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't um, know. Leslie didn't know. That's actually, if one of them gets sick, they will socially distance from each other until they get better. There's been cool. Well, I know that there's with vampire bats, there has been research where um, if a mom is sick, becomes sick, the other ones will take care of the babies. Yeah, and when he says it's vampire bats that do that. Yeah, so that's what she was. Yeah. yeah. Yep, wild well, vampire and bats. And very, cool. very few mammals do that. Will take care of something that is not of their genetic gene or like that, or in their gene pool. So pretty awesome. What are you doing? All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking at her. Wow. <laughs> Dang it. I don't know what she, oh, she's trying to get bugs away. <laughs> she's just, she's just so we learned bats are super important and they are in trouble. And so the zoo is helping them. And if Beth, if you could please show us our next slide of these two goobers. <laughs> <laughs> so Wendy and Leslie, who back here helping us answer questions, um, they go out in the summer. There's a North American bat is, they are part of that group and they they have a route that they go. They have a certain time, certain date and a certain route that they have to go and they drive very, very slowly down this route and they have an app on a tablet that records bat noises or bat calls all those frequencies you guys heard earlier that I, I played for you. And then if Beth, you can go to the next slide. So this past summer, this is what they saw or heard, I should say, and picked up. So the echo meter ID part. So that's what the, the app the, um, that they had on their, in the vehicle picked up, but it gave them options. So it said it could be this bad or it could be this bad. So then we go to an expert who knows <laughs> bat calls and he found, nope, it was actually just those. So the ones analyzed by, is it Han? Han. Han. There, those are what they actually truly had because he is an expert in because like I said each species has its own distinct call and he knows them <laughs> very well apparently. so he was able to say no these are the ones you, you actually heard which is pretty cool all right so our next one our next slide Miss Beth oh. <laughs> so the eastern red bat was the one that was heard the most which doesn't surprise me so if you live in North Carolina those are the ones you see in your um uh, the street lights. So in the summertime, you'll see them kind of zipping around street lights, trying to catch moths and all kinds of different bugs that are flying around the street lights where those lights are. So there, and I see them all the time. <laughs> all right, our next slide, our last slide, Miss Beth. Thank you. As you can see, and even it's kind of cool. They come out at different times of the night, mm -hmm. and I don't read military time, so <laughs> I tried to figure it out earlier. Like. What is 21 fifth day? I still don't know. <laughs> so that was like the highest uh, when they had I think the, it was nine something. Nine Maybe something, seven. thank you. <laughs> nine fifty, I guess that would be. Yeah. As yeah. when oh, Beth says nine fifty. Thank you. Yay, Beth. thank you, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't do military time. <laughs> so yeah, so that was when the eastern bat was most active. And then looks like the brown bat and Maybe the northern yellow bats were a little bit more, you know, more active earlier in the evening. So pretty cool stuff that we're learning. And so that goes to scientists who study bats. Okay, Beth, you can come back to me. Thank you very much. And so they're learning, they can learn so much. They learn what bats are around there. Um, <laughs> it's true, <just> like, <laughs> anything like that. So they can find out, you know, the, how many are out there too. So it helps scientists help monitor those bats because they're important as we've learned, super, super important. And you guys can help bats 
What are some ways that you think you can help bats? Oh, ouch. While we're hoping for responses, Natalie wants to know what is oh. a big brown bat? The big brown bat. It's a big brown bat. Yep. <laughs> it is a species of it. <laughs> What's that? I said scientists sometimes aren't very. No, we, when we got little brown bat and big brown bat. Yeah. <laughs> so those are a species we have pretty common here in North Carolina. I might have. Sure. Ooh. Let's see. All right. We have any responses yet for? Not quite yet. Okay. No one knows how to so, help bats. The question again oh, no. is how to, how to help bats. How can you guys help bats? So he looks like this. Oh, that's the best picture. It's a small one. But this is our little brown bat. Aww. He's cute. I hate that. Yours. <laughs> or excuse me, the big brown bat, I should say. Yeah. This is the big brown bat. <laughs> little ones like this, but smaller. <laughs> so, yeah. Those are probably some of our common ones. So, red bats, little brown bats, big brown bats, usually some of the more common ones we have here in North Carolina. But one way you can help is you can make one of these. Does anybody know what this is? That's a good beat. Mm. Now it says you can learn how to protect them. You can yeah. learn. Perfect. Yeah. Coming to this program. Absolutely. Yeah. Now you know, and you can learn more. Hopefully I've piqued some interest. And if you didn't like bats before, hopefully you're, hey, I might want to learn more about them. Or they're kind of cool. They're not too bad now. They're not so, scary. No, they're not the scary things that we think they are. I think they're pretty cute, to be honest with you. Diana says no, she doesn't know what that is. You know what this is? All right, well, I guess I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a bat box. So this is a man-made box since their habitat is, remember their habitats is going, their habitats. <laughs> Whew, it has been a day. Their habitat is declining. And so we're making homes for them to roost in during the daytime, or even have babies, right? So the nursery. So some of them are um, colonies, do form colonies, and they like to put their pups somewhere together and keep them all together. And so this could be a nursery for some bats around here. But look at this. Look how small that is. So the bats we have around here are not big at all. And so they can squeeze in here. They climb on those little ridges, those little things right here. They climb on up there, and then they can grab on to those ridges with their, their little toes, little claws, and hang out in there. And they like to be nice and close to each other. So this, this is a small version. And this would probably hold probably about 20 to 30 bats, would be my guess. But if you go to, there's a really cool website called batcon.org, B-A-T-C-O-N.org. Maybe if one of you guys want to um, type that in the, the chat so they can see it, <laughs> that link there. You can learn so much about bats and you can get plans on how to make these and not only how to make them, but how to hang them to be successful because you have to hang it in a certain way. If it gets too much sun, it's too hot for the bats in there and they won't go in there. Um, if you um, hang it too low, other predators can get in there and eat the bats like that. So there's lots of different things that go in are involved in just hanging a bat. So you can't just throw it up wherever you want. Um, but if you have bats, you might get those little brown bats and they come out at night and they eat all the mosquitoes around your house. So yes, get yourself a bat box. <laughs> um, wants to know if, if it matters what color your bat has. Ah, so you guys see the map here I have on front of the box? So color recommendations. So they say uh, where we are in North Carolina, where the green is, that says a dark or medium shade of paint. Because if you go black, see, I thought you said pink. Oh, <laughs> well, a dark or muted shade of pink, sure. <laughs> so if you if you paint them black, it might get too hot in the sun because sun the uh, black absorbs the heat. So yeah, so this and there's all that information is on there too. Absolutely. So yeah, there's a lot to learn about it. Lots of cool stuff. Ooh. Yeah, and Gwendolyn says we can do that. So yeah, that's easy. Yeah, something you really easy that does through. help. And be honest with you, we make we have a, an overnight program that we do here at Zeus News. Yay. And for one of them, they make cat boxes. That's why that one's smaller. Because normally the plans are think for almost twice that wider than that. And you can even actually add layers to make a nursery and more bats and fit in them. So pretty awesome. Something I think everybody can do. Learning, like you said, absolutely. Um, not using pesticides. You know, if your parents are out there putting pesticides, killing the books. 
Tell them not to. Those bats will take care of it. <laughs> All right. Hmm. You have any other questions? Um, Natalie's asking what animals also help bats. Yeah. Uh, like, are you talking about? Yeah, I think it's something, Natalie. Um, could you could you help us out a little bit like, more, Natalie? Like, yeah. what are you looking for here? Yeah. Are, there, <laughs> are you asking if there are any other bats, or are there any animals that like help bats survive, or live, they live in the same area together? Because <laughs> like, um, because we talked about the the, the roaches, the roaches helping yeah. the bats and yeah. keeping their house clean, keeping their home clean. Um, yeah. I'm sure they live what we call in symbiosis. So they they live, yeah. you know, with other animals. They they help each other out with them clean, keeping their home clean. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, them providing fertilizer for plants and things like that. So yeah. Left too soon. She would have known. Uh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Any other um, questions? Will red tail hawks kill bats? Yes. <laughs> so uh, there's, there's yeah. something that you were saying earlier. Yeah. If you Google, I don't, I don't know what, what you would need to Google, but there's a video <laughs> out there <laughs> and you can see, actually, it's kind of cool. There's, I've seen several videos of red-tailed hawks that will sit by an entrance of a cave and wait for the bass to come out in the evening. And they just go zipping through and hunting for them. I think falcons will do it too. Lots of birds of prey and even snakes. There's a video of like the oh, snake really? hanging over you know, waiting for the bats to come around <laughs> and just, it's like a free buffet. Wow. So they do have a lot of predators. They definitely have to be wary, <laughs> but that's why sometimes, and they don't reproduce. They have one pup most of the time. They very rarely have more than one pup. And so they don't reproduce very quickly. Like a lot of like, you know, your insects and a lot of other animals that have lots of babies. Paula, so. uh, or probably Liam or Joseph. <laughs> Sorry, um, says so cruel, but we we think cruel, but it's also they're opportunistic, it's right? They're gonna do the circle of life. Yep, they're gonna do what works best for them. Yeah, yep, absolutely. I mean, they're not they're not they're taking like hundreds of bats at a time. Oh. They're gonna take one. Um, right? Michael wants to know: uh, Do bats eat butterflies? Um, well, what time of day do butterflies come out? Mm. Usually, are more active, I should say. Daytime or nighttime? When do we see those beautiful colors? Yeah. Day. Day. Daytime, right. When are bats more active? Most bats, I should say. Not all <laughs> bats. Not all bats. Right. Nighttime. Right. Are, yes. They're nocturnal, right? So most bats are nocturnal. So they're going to eat the moths, which are active at night. So very rarely. I mean, there might be a case. Where there's a random butterfly just hanging out and the bat happened yeah. to see it. Has it, been, it hasn't gone <laughs> but they don't yet. usually go, yeah. They don't, it's mostly moths <laughs> that they're hunting. Nice guy. Good question though. Any other ones? Not yeah. seeing any. All right. Well, I will let you go. Remember, guys. Thank your bats when you're out <laughs> trick-or-treating. All right. So, oh my goodness, so fast. and this is the double whammy. So this is not only the cocoa, but the it's the almonds. Oh, it's a triple high whammy. Oh. <laughs> it's the it's the coconut, the almonds, and the cocoa that bats. That's perfect example. I wow. know. Oh, Look at that. Go, Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will be eating that later. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy All right. Halloween. Thank you guys. Happy Halloween. Stay safe, and we'll see you next Thursday. Bye, guys. <laughs>